prison architect. Is it worth a buy? Let's read, let's read. Build and manage a maximum security prison. As the sun casts its early morning rays on a beautiful patch of countryside, the clock starts ticking. Tick, tick, Mac, that's a bell, not a clock. You've got to crack on and build a holding cell to detain the job lot of maximum security prisoners that are trundling to your future prison on the yellow bus. As your workmen lay the last brick, you don't have a moment to let them rest as they need to get started on the first proper cell block so you can make room for your next prisoner intake. Once they've all got a place to lay their weary heads, the fun can really start. You will need a canteen, infirmary, a guard room, and don't forget to plumb the toilet or things will get messy. But what about a workout area or solitary confinement cells or an execution chamber? Inspired by Dungeon Keeper Dwarf Fortress and Theme Hospital, with over 1 million players, there's actually 1.4 million now, Prison Architect is the world's best lock em up. Before I go on and talk about the game guys, I want to mention the graphics. There's two settings and I've used both of them in this review. There's a unsampled graphics which is what you're looking at now and then there's multi-sampled which you'll see uh, later on. You'll notice straight away the difference between the two. The reason I've done two is because obviously some people don't have as very powerful PC so you can run it in low res mode and then there's the people who have a much powerful PC and they can run it in high res mode. I'm only running a mid-range PC and it runs fine in high res mode so let's get on with it. What is Prison Architect? Well the first time I played this was about two and a half years ago in one of the early alpha versions. I loved the game back then and I did a, a playthrough on my other channel where my Jill burnt to the ground. Uh, but it was still great fun and it was only sandbox mode and you had one kind of chapter of a story which was about a guy called Edward who caught his wife in bed with another guy, shot them both and ended up going to prison on death row and you had to build the electric chair. That's not really a spoiler before people start crying again because that's pretty much the first thing you do in the game if you're playing in story mode. So you kind of get to know that within the first two minutes of the game. Now however they've added four chapters to the story mode which is great and I've pretty much played through the whole lot um, this morning. Um, I only wanted, wanted to come on for an hour to do, because I've played the game, I know how you play, I wanted a refresher for an hour then I was going to do me WAB. Um, I've now been playing, it's now 20 to 3 in the afternoon, I've been playing it all day pretty much. So that's how good this game is, I can't put it down, it's bloody great. And it's so much better now than it was back in the alpha when I played it. I'm not going to talk about the story because um, I don't want to spoil it for you but what the story is is kind of like a tutorial as well it shows you how to run a prison how to build a prison how to keep it functioning how to deal with huge incidents such as fires riots and all kinds of stuff there's a lot more stuff that goes on in a prison and you get to see all this firsthand and be in charge of it and the great thing about the tutorial or campaign whatever you want to call it is once you've finish the objectives you can stay in and keep playing the prison if you want or you can come out and move on to the next chapter which I think is a really nice feature because in one of the I'm not going to tell you what I was doing but in one of the scenarios I was doing a lot of building work and then I'd finished the, the objectives and it says right move on to the next chapter and I thought no 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 I want to just play it a bit to see how me inmates react to all this building and I could I was able to do that which is fabulous so it is really good in that sense um, but for me, the real game is not the campaign. The real game is free play, the sandbox mode. It is absolutely phenomenal, the sandbox mode, because you have a lot of options. You can disable finances if you want, give yourself unlimited money. But I don't really want to do that yet, because I quite like the whole balancing of the books. Um, the way you balance the books is the more inmates you get, the more money you get. But you've got to have the right facilities or the inmates will riot. And if the inmates riot, well, you've got a real problem on your hands. So I, I quite like the way you balance the books on it. But what you do in this, and it, it, it is quite stressful because you just get a big patch of land. That's it, a bit like Sim City. And you will be told that a busload of prisoners is coming. And it's like, oh shit, get building. Now to give you an idea, you're gonna need a storage building, you're gonna need a kitchen, you're gonna need a canteen, you're gonna need cells, you're gonna need shower blocks, you're gonna need a yard for exercising, you're gonna need an infirmary, a doctor's or doctor's office, you're gonna need a foreman, you're gonna need a warden's office, you're gonna need a lot of different office blocks, separate office blocks in there, you're gonna need a fence. The first time I ever played this game, I forgot to put a security fence out. I'm building little buildings like I'm playing the fucking Sims, and then the bus comes and all the prisoners say, hey, f this, run lads, run, there's no fence. 
So build a fence rather quickly because once the prisoners get in there they're going to want to escape especially some of the hard asses. You're going to need all kinds of stuff and also as well you're going to need a power station, you're going to need a water station because your showers, your toilets are all going to need plumbing in and the lights are going to need electricity as are the cookers and all the rest of it. So you've got a utility mode which when you press it shows you the pipe and electricity layout and all you do is you just make sure that anything that needs water has a pipe going to it. But you have to be careful when you lay in the pipes because the little pipes don't keep the water pressure up so you need to lay big pipes and then have the little pipes just moving off the big pipe but not too far so you have to plan everything planning is crucial in this game you don't want to build some buildings too big that are hardly ever used i made that mistake with an infirmary i built it was like a hospital ward and there was no in so you know don't build big buildings and then i had a morgue which was rather full but quite small yeah with cells don't give the much cell just give them a little tiny cell you know, uh, 6p2 cells with a bed and a shitter. That's all they want. The little bastards don't deserve anything else. You can, if you want, give them libraries and books and TVs and all the rest of it. But why would you want to do that? The criminals. Well, if you don't do that, they get upset. Oh, f***ing shoot the c***s then. Mac, you can't just do... I could in my jail. F*** them. Electrocute the bastards. You know what I'm saying? But they will riot eventually because you have this needs button and you press it and it shows you the needs of everybody. And if they get too far in the red, you run the risk of them rioting. So what you do is you give them snooker tables, you give them TVs. Do you f***? You can, but no, no, no. You just hire some f***ing armed guards. And if the c***s riot, shoot the bastards. It depends how, that's the good thing about this game, you can run the prison like a bastard, or as I would say a normal person, or you can run it like a namby-pamby lefty liberal do-gooding piece of shit if you want. It's up to you guys, you know, you know these people who think prisoners should have rights and that they should be able to have votes and stuff. You can run it like that if you want. Personally, I'd put all them c***s in jail as well for trying to run a jail like that, because in my book, as soon as you commit a crime you forfeit every f***ing right you had as a person. Yeah, throw them in the deepest, darkest hole and let the c***s rot. That's what I say because I'm fed up of watching the f***ing news and seeing some c***t, some little wasted man come out of jail on parole and then rape somebody or commit murder. It's just ridiculous. That would never happen in Max England because in Max England I'd execute the c***s. What's your crime, sir? I'm in for rape, are you? <coughs> execute, hung. What are you in for, sir? Murder. Hung. That that would be my jail. That, what are you What are you doing? Car theft. Car theft. Okay. Tie him to the stocks in the centre circle at half time in the nearest Premiership football ground. Strip him to the waist. Get a fucking whip and whip the cunt till he passes out. Once he's passed out, rub salt in the fucking wounds. Then kick the cunt off the fucking pitch. That's what I would do. That's what I would do. So you build your jail and then you start receiving the influx of prisoners and you have to make sure that you on budget you have to make sure you've got enough money to build all the amenities because at first you're not going to have that money so you have to start small and then expand expand you expand to armories you get dog handling units kennels and then the big prize guys you get the electric chair in of course you do it's not murdering them i mean killing them i mean executing them Sorry. so it's great fun in that sense there's also another brand new mode being added escape mode escape mode that's right you actually get to play using wasad as one of the little inmates you come in on a bus and you get put in a cell and then you have to obey the regime of that prison and you want to know the best laugh it could be a player built prison because you can build your own prison and upload it to the steam workshop and then you can try and escape from one of them prisons how cool is that and you can dig a tunnel behind your toilet, you know. You, you form a gang, you recruit people and say, Hey mate, do you want to be in Max gang? Then you go up to the daddy and you say, You got your tool? What tool? This f***ing tool, Mac. Mac, you've been watching Scum again, haven't you? Sorry. And then you get, get a gang together. And how do you get a gang? By getting a rep. How do you get rep? Well, you know, you just start by finding somebody who's a little softy. Someone who does, like, I don't know, computer piracy, who might be in for six months. You beat the f*** out of them in front of other people so they go, f***ing hell, he's hard. You get him on the floor vomiting in his own blood, and then you get reputation points. You might end up in solitary confinement for 50 hours like I did, but hey, you still get rep. And using that rep, you can make yourself bigger, tougher, faster, stronger, or you can recruit people to your little gang. And you can have like a whole gang of yours. And then when you get in a fight, you just whistle for your friends and they all pile in and you've got a fucking riot on your hands. And I haven't got that far, but 
I, needless to say, I will be getting that far. I found it great fun, the actual being a prisoner thing, which is a great addition to this game. Without that, the game is still worth a buy. With that, it's just icing on the cake, really, isn't it? So, it's a really good in-depth game, this. It has a decent set of options with it. It runs fine. It feels fine. It plays well. You're going to get a lot of hours out of this. It's £20. It's not cheap, but it's well worth it. it because of the amount of stuff that you can do with Think of it like a cross between Sim City and The Sims. You know, if you play The Sims, you're obviously a woman. Well, this is... For men, this is the men's version of The Sims, and it's also good for women. I know a lot of women that will play this, but it's, you know, you can finally play something similar to The Sims, because obviously men want to play The Sims, but are scared, because they don't want to admit that they're playing The Sims. I mean, you know, have you ever played The Sims? No, 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 f***ing no, I've got to hide the box. No, no, I've never played that. What is that? The Sims? No, never heard of it. All oh, right, no. it's just that you've got the box there. That's me wife's, that's me wife's copy. Yeah, I don't play it, no, no. No, I've never played The Sims and made a family comprised of two women and then try to get them to have sex. I haven't done that. No, no. I just play man's games. Yeah. Shit. I just want to end, guys, by mentioning Introversion, the people who made this game. There's a lot of bad talk about early access, and rightly so, because it's abused by so many companies. These are a breath of fresh air, guys. These have done this all correct. This game started out as early access, but you know what? It's been pretty much updated month in, month out. All the way through. They've never stopped updating. Even when it surpassed a million sales, they didn't just say, oh, f it, let's just release it now. We've got money. We've made a load of money. Let's just release the game now. F it. They didn't do that. They just kind of put the money to the side, hired him who they needed, and just kept their vision of what this game was going to be. And they've kept with it and now it's got 1.4 million players. And it'll get a hell of a lot more now that it's released on Steam. And they've done it properly. They've done it correctly. These guys are full of talent. Full of integrity. And I think they are a breath of fresh air. And if you are an up and coming game developer. You could do a lot worse than look to these guys for inspiration. So there you go guys. I just want to say that if you're into this kind of management game. But you want to do it in a prison. Get it. It's a freaking great solid game.